Tonight, we've got a program, it's our annual program on insurance, since it is an open enrollment for Medicare plans. Uh, but before we get started, I'd like to welcome Boku Morcos from uh, Bios Clinical, who's going to talk about a trial that she has going on. Um, so Goku, are you on and able to unmute? I am. Jeff, are you able to hear me? Yes, we can. We can hear okay. you. Okay. Uh, All right. Wonderful. Thank you. Hi, everyone. Um, it's a pleasure. Uh, thank you, Jeff, for allowing me a few minutes. Um, I wanted to tell all of you about a study that we are going to begin enrolling in the next couple of weeks. Um, and a study I've talked about a couple of times at the last positive, uh, last couple of positive life meetings. Um, it is a study for patients who are living with HIV, who have a history of being on antiretroviral regimens and may have a history of resistance or um, other issues that lend them to being on what we call a complex regimen. Um, and a complex regimen is defined really by any regimen that is not a one pill once a day regimen. So again, if, if you're someone who's been living with HIV for a long time, you may have had a history of resistance and you're on multiple pills, maybe multiple times a day. Um, there is a new regimen, which luckily actually is a combination of two medications um, one of which is already out on the market for years, and another one which is, has been studied in individuals who are heavily treatment experienced with HIV. Um, and that combination is Bictegravir, which is the component of Bictarvi, and Lenacapavir, which is the new agent um, that's been studied in heavily treatment experienced patients. The caveat being that Lenacapavir in the study is an oral tablet versus it being an injectable. And so they're combining these two medications, Bictegravir and Lenacapavir together to be a, ultimately be a one pill once a day regimen for individuals who are treatment experienced and cannot, uh, are currently not on a one pill once a day. And the, you know, that one of the things I mentioned um, is you, know, you have a history of resistance, but it could also apply for individuals who have any other reason for not being on a one pill once a day, including you may have tolerability issues against single tablet regimens, or there may be some other reason, some other contraindication, let's say a drug interaction or otherwise that um, prevents you from being on a one pill once a day. So again, it's simplifying your regimen. It's being able to provide you a once a day regimen um, when you otherwise have a, have a complex regimen. And again, the neat thing about this is it's two medications that are highly potent. Um, both of them have been already through clinical trials. One of them is already on the market and the other one just got approved in Europe and is um, going to be approved in the US in a few months, I believe. So we are looking for candidates. I will um, in the chat, write our information for Bios Clinical Research, our phone number, our website, um, you can, and, and our email, you can contact me through email. There's a form on our website if you want to fill out your information, if you're interested, um, and we can, we'd be happy to talk to you. Thanks so much, Jeff. Great. Thank you. There was a, a question in the chat about the dose of lenacapavir. Yeah, so um, they're looking at a couple of different doses. They're going to be looking at 25 milligrams as well as 50 milligrams. Um, this is a phase two study and it's going to be transitioning into phase three. Um, and so in phase three, they're gonna finalize the lenacapavir dosing and Bictegravir is gonna be 75 milligrams in phase two. And then in phase three, they'll decide um, whether or not it's gonna be 75 or 50, which is the uh, dose that it is at in um, Bictarvi. But I will say, um, if anyone is, you know, has any questions around, you know, um, the, the different doses that are being looked at, the analysis that they've done with the different doses is that the minimum concentrations, like the lowest level of the doses, are well above the minimum concentrations that are required um, to keep virus suppressed. So um, we're, 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 we're very comfortable and happy with uh, the two um, different dosing options. Terrific, thank you. Sure. Any other questions for uh, Goku? Oh, they want to know what class of uh, medications yeah. that is. 
Sure. Uh, so lenacapavir is a capsid inhibitor. It, it is a novel mechanism of action. There is no other uh, medicine on the market that works like a, um, that is uh, classified as a capsid inhibitor. And um, the really cool thing about capsid inhibitors is that it actually targets multiple points in the viral life cycle, um, which, and it make it's actually a very potent um, medication um, that's been studied. It's got about a two, what we call a two log drop. Um, in viral load in the heavily treatment experience studies that were um, study that was conducted. And then Bictegravir, you're all familiar with, that's an integrase inhibitor, a second generation. Again, very, very potent, um, comparable to uh, Tivike or Dolutegravir. So the two of those together um, are a great pairing. Terrific, great, thank you so much. I don't see any sure. other questions. Thank you, thanks so much. All right, thank you again. So to Steven's question, yes, it is for people with multi-class resistance. So, um, are we on? Is this working in the theater? Coming through the intercom, can everybody hear okay? Okay. Wanna make sure there's an echo. So a um, couple of uh, housekeeping things, restrooms are around the corner to the right. And uh, this weekend is gonna be uh, Palm Springs Pride and HARP is going to have a booth there. So we would love it if uh, people could come visit us. And if anybody would like to volunteer to take a, uh, a uh, stint at the booth, we'd really appreciate it. Um, talk to uh, Stephen or Christopher and uh, they've got a sign up sheet. So um, it's gonna be on Saturday from 10 to 8 p.m. And again, on Sunday from 11 to 9 and 11. I'm sorry, 11 to 9. What, to 4.30? 11. 11 to 4.30. So, uh, yeah, if you'd like to help out, please uh, do and just let us know. We'd love to have you join us. And where is it again? It's, um, do we know exactly where our booth is going to be? It's going to be on Palm Canyon. It's uh, between uh, Alfred's and uh, Owens. Okay. Close. Yeah. We're across from the entrance to the Plaza Shopping Center parking lot. So kind of by with the brickworks. Perfect. Great. All right. So without further ado, I'd like to uh, introduce our uh, speaker for this evening, Cesar Perez from Bill Hart's Insurance. Uh, he's probably a familiar face. Uh, he and, and his partner, Brian, have done this program for a number of years now. So we're delighted to have him come and talk about uh, the latest and greatest in insurance this year. Cesar, Thank take you. it away. Jeff, can you use the microphone? Um, so on the microphone, uh, see, uh, there you go. All right, use this. I'll use this, but um, am, are we able to share my screen on the Zoom meeting or is that already happening? It's already, already happening. All right. I wanna make sure. Yeah, the only thing is I have to share my PowerPoint. I'm not sure the folks on Zoom are gonna be able to see it. To be um, enable share. Okay. Yeah. Perfect. I think everybody can see. I'm sorry, it's not showing yet. I thought it went to Zoom. That's next one. That was the next one. I know it's. Um, Oops. Oh. You minimize your um, presentation. 
When you that's just you're showing before. Log out of the Zoom meeting. The folks online go spare with us. Even the young. Cesar, does Alex start? It looks as though Zoom thinks that we're able to see your screen. Yeah, that's what I think. But it's... Are you on a laptop where some of the time you have a second screen attached to your laptop when you're at home? Uh, no. Uh, no, I think, Alistair, we're going to go ahead and have him uh, log out of the Zoom meeting and log back in. Okay. So Zoom meeting will stay on. We'll try it that way. Go to... Um... Time is on PowerPoint. Okay. Actually, now it's going to allow me to. And let's see if you can yes. see it now, right? Okay. Now we can. <laughs> All right. Sorry about that. Everybody able to see that now? Okay, fantastic. All right, well, let's get going. Thank you, Jeff. Uh, thank you, everybody, for being here tonight, as well as the online people. Uh, we appreciate it. And again, I think we've been doing this for a number of years now, maybe four or five years. And so every year we come and talk to you about the basics of Medicare. We don't do any um, individual plan plans. Uh, we can't show that because this is an ed educational meeting only. Uh, however, we'll go through the basics of Medicare. If you do have questions afterwards about your specific situation, I can. I will be hanging around and answering any question, as well as uh, you will have. I think Jeff will forward my information to you if you're online, uh, and uh, you'll have the business card there. It has my office address as well as my phone number. If you need to talk, make sure to give me a call. Normally, my secretary will answer the phone. So if you do need to speak to me directly, please leave a voice message. This moment in time it's a very beast, the, the busiest season for us and this year has been crazy uh, just help some housekeeping items if you do know anybody that is on inner valley health plan or you yourself might be uh, that plan is coming to an end on december the 31st so uh, make sure you either call me or make sure you make arrangements because if you do not you will be out of a plan for next year again my name is caesar press that's my number up there in my email and today's agenda we're going to be going over what uh, the Medicare program is. We're gonna explain what the plan options are as well as discuss enrollment periods as well as then open it up for Q&A in the end. Now, one of the things we like to talk about is what we do for the people that we serve. Uh, we, we always emphasize that we are local, I am local. My office uh, filled with local agents and we are not affiliated with social security, Medicare or any governmental agency. Now you might get a phone call saying that um, you know you're getting a call for Medicare. That is pretty much false, and that is a scam more often than not because Medicare will not call you unless you call them. Um, however, uh, people like myself, we are licensed by the California Department of Insurance, and that is the reason why we're able to give you this information. 
And our main focus is to educate uh, all Medicare eligible beneficiaries about their plan options. And the nice thing about this is that we do this at no cost to you. Now, uh, there are cer certain questions that we can resolve. Uh, for example, if you dial the 800 number on an insurance company and sign up through them, um, it is uh, for any customer service or any questions you might have, it might be uh, faster when you have somebody uh, like myself helping you in my office because you call us and sometimes we're able to resolve that question in a couple of minutes. Sometimes when you call a carrier, they might not know what in the world you're talking about because they might have people from other countries answering the phone or they might just be new, right? They might just be new, uh, st started the job a week ago and they don't know what they're talking about yet. Uh, so with that being said, let's go into the meat of the presentation. So you are eligible for Medicare. So if you are not yet 65 and don't have a disability, uh, you will be eligible for Medicare until you are 65. And you must have lived in the U.S. for at least five years, consecutive years, and must be a legal resident as well to qualify for the program. We have this card on screen, which is a red, white, and blue card. That is your Medicare card. Finally, after 2019, they figured out it was not a great idea to put the social security number as the Medicare number. So now uh, we have a random series of numbers and letters that is now your Medicare number. And you do have parts A and B. I will go over that in the next few slides. Uh, there are people that only have part A and only part B. But uh, essentially, if you have part A, that covers what we call inpatient hospital stays. And most people do not pay a premium for that if they have had a work history of 40 quarters, which is the equivalent of 10 years. And they can be consecutive or they can be broken up. It doesn't matter. Uh, if you do not have the quarters in place, qualify for part A, you will pay a premium, which is either going to be $4.99 if you have less than 30 quarters or $2.74 if you have anywhere between 30 and 39 quarters. And that is for the year 2022. Next year, those numbers are going to be a little bit different as well as any um, numbers that I go through with you today. Uh, there is a late enrollment penalty if you do not enroll for part A when you first sign, when you first when you are first eligible for it. And that Penalty is 10% per year, and it goes for twice the number of years that you missed the enrollment for. So if you missed it for a year, your penalty is going to be two years, so forth and so on. And it again, 10% per year penalty. Now, some of the services covered under Part A are going to be home health care, hospice care, inpatient hospital stay, which is the main one, and then skilled nursing facility, as well as a mental uh, health inpatient stay. Now, some of the costs associated, so if you just had this card and you had nothing else, you said, you know what, I'm not going to sign up for any plans. I'm just going to remain straight Medicare. You would have uh, what we call the deductible for Part A, which is if you are hospitalized, uh, you would pay any uh, $1,556 if you're in there between one or up to 60 days. And then there's a per day amount beyond the 60 days after day 91. Uh, there is an, a higher per day amount of 778, and then you get an additional 60 lifetime reserve days. Once those are gone, then you must pay all costs beyond that. For a skilled nursing facility, the first 20 days are zero, but then after day 20, it's $188 per day under Part A. The second part of Medicare is uh, Part B. Now, for Part B, you have what we call a standard premium. In 2022, it's 170 and 10 cents. And in 2023, that's actually going to come down, which is surprising because I have not seen that before. It's actually going to come down to $164.90. So, hey, enjoy your race, right? And I think we are getting about an eight and a half percent increase on Social Security as well. So, you know, that'll be at least good news for a year. Who knows what's going to happen after that? Uh, there is. A, so there are people that have both part uh, Medicare, I'm sorry, and Medi-Cal or Medicaid. Anybody who has both programs, uh, Medi-Cal will pay for their Part B premiums if they qualify for full benefits under Medi-Cal. Uh, so you, if you are eligible for that, then you will not see the 170 come out of your Social Security check every month. If you do make a higher amount of income, there is what we call an income-related Medicare adjustment or Part B. So you can see the grid 
on screen, depending on what you file or how you file, whether it's individual or joint, you have certain amounts that if you make more than that, your premium will be a higher amount. Uh, so for example, you make your individual making uh, nine, uh, more than 91,000, you will make, you will pay 238, so long as you make under 114,000, so on and so forth. And you can see there the highest amount would be about $578. Uh, actually, I'm sorry. Your slides are not advancing on Zoom for some reason. Uh, yeah, that's, uh, and is it with everybody or is it just, just sometimes? Here we see. Right. Okay, I'm sorry. I do not know how that's not. Apparently, my slides are not advancing. I'm not sure how we fix that, though. Should I log in, log back in, log out, or what should we do? Sharing is. Yeah, I mean, there's not. Mind up. You, you, so you see them like. Mind up. This is what we're okay. saying. You want to go into presenter mode, maybe? Yeah, you're in you know what? Mode. I am? Hmm. I mean, you did allow me to share my screen. Yeah, so. and it says that you're sharing. So uh, I start slideshow from current. So screen. it's actually changing now there, but it's just, I, well, yeah, but if I, as soon as I go into slideshow, it's. Apparently it's not working once I go into slideshow. So let me watch. So check. So if I advance, let me advance. Does it does it change there? No. No. Yeah, I don't know. What's go back weird. to the uh, one you were on before. With the yeah. Well, let me. On the side let, let's the try something else. Let me. The presentation here. Yeah, you know what? I think it's um, PowerPoint taking over the the computer or something. When you go back into um, not slideshow but presenter mode, mm -hmm. it was advancing. So maybe you just want to go into that. Oh, you know what? I know what's happening. So apparently, well, apparently, um, when I share my screen, it looks like I am sharing only. So it allows me to share. Like, let me let me try it again. New share. And what I'll do is I'll, I'll share everything. There you go. Now it's gonna probably advance. So let me let me go into presentation mode. Um, let's see, is it now changing? Yeah. Okay. Try, try changing it. See it. Make sure it advances. Advance. Yes. Yep. Okay. Yeah. Thank you. Sorry about that. Yeah. I, yeah. This technology. So that's why I am in insurance and I'm not in computers. <laughs> now you know. Uh, so again, the part B, um, the uh, income related Medicare adjustment. Uh, highest amount is going to be for uh, 578 per month. Uh, as far as coverage under Part B, that's going to be, uh, I'm sorry, the late enrollment penalty. There's also a late enrollment penalty. And normally somebody's going to get stuck with that penalty. And when they get stuck with that penalty, it's not, it's not good because it's a perpetual penalty. This one does not go away. And so when somebody doesn't sign up for Part B when they're first eligible for, so if they turn 65 and they don't sign up, and if they don't have other coverage to waive the penalty, for example, if they do not have employer coverage, they will be stuck with a penalty of 10% per year. Uh, and they will have to wait to enroll in Part B between January 1st to March 30th. And then their Medicare would begin July 1st, which actually that rule just changed for next year. If they enroll in January, their Medicare Part B is effective February, so on and so forth. And then if they missed, March 31st deadline, then they have to wait until the following year, and they obviously are going to accrue more of a penalty. So if you have any friends who are close to turning 65, you make sure you let them know, hey, you got to do something, because many people will think mistakenly that if they are not going to draw Social Security, that they do not need to apply for Part B, which is a mistake. And so they end up just not applying, and then they get stuck with the penalty, and then they will say, hey, well, nobody ever told me about this. Uh, and yeah, normally when you call Social Security, who knows who you're going to get? And so they may or may not, you know, tell you what the, the penalty is, or they may not even know that there's a penalty themselves if they haven't been working there a period of time. Now, the coverage under Part B, you're going to have a deductible, and it's going to cover pretty much your um, doctor visits, vis visits specialists that work, x-rays, surgeries, and even the emergency room is going to fall under Part B. Uh, and under Part B, you have a $233 deductible, excuse me, and 
Beyond that deductible, you must pay 20% of whatever Medicare allows. So normally Medicare will have a, a list per the codes, per the medical codes of what amount the doctors are able to charge. And then doctors are able to charge as well um, other additional fees, but um, they're capped off to a percentage. However, um, you will pay to a 20% coinsurance beyond your deductible on their part B. So you can see how that adds up quickly, especially when you're having more intense uh, services like maybe chemotherapy, surgeries, things of that nature. And if there's no cap, then obviously that is a problem. The next part of Medicare that I'm going to cover is called part D. D is for drugs. So if anybody takes medications, uh, they will have part D or depending on the plan that you're under, you will have Part D. What I'm going to explain now is the structure of Part D, meaning the way a Part D plan should work, or at least with Medicare. Because Part D is administered by private insurance companies, so the guidelines that Medicare sets for each of the plans is the same. So the plans have to at least offer what I'm, I'm going to explain, or better. Normally, most of them will give you better coverage than this. So up on top, you can see it says annual deductible, and so. If your plan has a deductible for 2022, that's $180. Some plans will have a lower deductible. Some plans will have no deductible. So once you satisfy this deductible under Part D, e, you're going to go into what we call the initial coverage limit there to our left, which says $4,430. That is the amount the insurance company is going to pay on your behalf. What that means is I will give you an example. Say that you're taking a medication and your co-payment because uh, your insurance pays a portion. Let's just say it's a $40 co-payment. But then that medication retails for $1,000. Well, if it's an expensive medication like that, well, how long is it going to take before you exhaust your $44.30? Well, you know, about a little bit over four months. So once you exhaust your $44.30, you're going to hit the infamous donut hole. And so that's also known as a coverage gap. When you're in the donut hole, well, that's not a that's not a pretty good place to be in because then at that point you are going to pay 25% of the full cost or the retail cost of the medication, whatever the negotiated rate is for that insurance company. And you will get a 70% discount from the drug manufacturer, and the insurance company will pay the remainder, remaining 5%. In order for you to come out of the donor hole, the 25% that you pay plus the 70% discount, plus your deductible, that if, you, if there was one that you paid, plus any co-payments that you paid during the initial coverage limit has to reach $7,050 before you go into what we call catastrophic coverage. And normally your price goes down to 5% of the retail negotiated cost. And or depending if it's generic, 395, 985 per brand, whichever of those amounts is greater. So I always like to get around and say, well, I don't know who the rocket scientist that came up with this was, right? Because it's not very, not very simple. I guess uh, folks in the government were the ones to come up with this. So we got to thank them for this mess. Anyways, um, the Part D also has certain terminology. For example, uh, we have what's called a drug formulary. So every insurance company has a list of drugs that it's that is covered and they must cover a drug for every um, category, for every um, illness category that's out there. And so, you know, sometimes people will ask, well, how, how do they decide which drugs to include? Well, and normally it's uh, between a decision between the insurance companies and doctors that they hired and you know, they have to figure out which uh, which medications are going to be on the formulary. They're also tiered formulary. So all of the companies are going to have different tiers. Uh, some of them one through five, some of them one through six. And depending on what tier the medication, they put the medication on, you're going to have a corresponding co-payment when you go in and fill that medication at the pharmacy. Now, there are also other terms that are used. For example, there's quantity limitation and prior authorization. Those normally will apply to certain medications, especially medications that have that are habit forming or that might be op opioids. Those uh, might have quantity limits, so they will not prescribe more than a, like a 30-day supplies. Like 
For pain meds, there are some where like a primary doctor cannot supply you with more than seven days because they want you to go see a specialist. They will, they want to make sure that you're not, you know, getting addicted to these things. There's also prior authorization for certain medications. And then there's also step therapy. Step therapy will, uh, they have to go through, they, they have to make you go through step therapy so that you don't hit your donor hole quickly. That just means that they will give you the lowest cost medication first, and then they have to give you a more expensive one if that one doesn't work. So sometimes people will get angry and say, well, you know what, why don't they just prescribe the good one, you know, the good stuff, the brand? Well, you know, the donor hole is part of the reason. And obviously the step therapy, you have, they have to, you know, first prescribe that lower cost alternative, and then they will authorize the next one up uh, once that uh, is one, if that does not work, and then you can always re request an exemption. So an exception. So for example, sometimes people will say, "Well, I'm not taking any medications now, but what if the doctor prescribes something and it's not on the formulary?" Well, the doctor can, if there's not another drug on the formulary that is going to be that is going to work for you, they can request an exception for you. And those exceptions must be approved or denied within 72 hours. Or sometimes if you're taking a medication and that one doesn't work, uh, the other one that you want to take is not on the formulary. They, this process will also uh, happen. And so the times that I've helped people request an exception, it's been very easy. Uh, normally we just call and they will ask questions whether the person has taken X, Y, or Z med. And if they have, uh, they will normally approve it. Sometimes they might say, well, let me, let us get back to you. We're going to call your pharmacist, doctor, or whoever, so that, you know, we know that, you know, you've taken these medications. But for the most part, they will run what we call an MIB check, and they can find out which you've been prescribed in the past. There is an income-related related Medicare adjustment for Part B as well. Um, so for Part B, if you recall, there was one, and then for Part D, there is another one. So if you are making more than those amounts you see on screen, you will pay an additional amount tacked on to your uh, Part D coverage. So there is also below that you can see there's a late enrollment penalty. Same, same deal would apply to the Part D late enrollment penalty as the Part B as in boy late enrollment penalty. So these two penalties are perpetual. The Part D for drugs penalty is going to be uh, lower because it's based on a lower amount. If you see it says under 33, 37, 2022, that's the standard or the national base Part D premium and the penalties based on that, whereas the Part B penalties based on the, it was 170 this year. So you can see how that's going to differ if you do have a penalty. So oh, when you have Medicare, that red, white, and blue, you have a couple of options essentially for your coverage. To your left, if you're looking at the screen, you will have um, what we call a Medi Medicare supplement and Part D combination. So normally, uh, if you have that, you're going to keep your Medicare as your primary coverage, your red, white, and blue card. Then you will purchase a Medicare supplement to cover those costs not covered by Medicare, like we talked about, the Part A deductible and then the Part B uh, coinsurance amount. And for some of you who might be eligible to cover the Part B um, deductible as well. But uh, a Medicare supplement works. They're, they're basically picking up the tab on your behalf. Think of it as a really good buddy that's at a bar and you're just you know ordering drinks and you can order as much as you want. and They'll just pay the tab on your behalf so long as you're paying them a monthly amount. Essentially, that's how it works. And then when you have just straight Medicare, you also would want to purchase a Part D plan so for your drugs. And even if you're not taking drugs, then you still want to purchase that because then if you don't have it, then you will get that penalty. You start accruing that penalty that I talked about earlier. So uh, in with just straight Medicare, you have that option. And when you have when you have that straight Medicare with a supplement and a Part D plan, you can essentially go to any doctor in the United States as long as the doctor accepts Medicare. Not all doctors accept Medicare, but a lot of them do. So a lot of people tend to call this a PPO, quote unquote. 
right? Because they think that PPO would mistakenly. But um, again, it, it is just Medicare with a sub. The other option, Part C, also known as Medicare Advantage. So all those commercials you see on TV, they're going to be 99% of the time on Part C plan. What does Part C do well? Part C, you're essentially assigning your Medicare to a private insurance company, and they are giving you parts A, B, and in most cases, D combined. So you're combining A, B, and D, and that's known as Part C of Medicare. Now, most of the plans, for example, here in the Valley, most of them are going to be HMO plans. For next year, there's a couple of new PPO plans that, that came on the scene, and so that's, you know, depending on what your needs are, so that could be a that could be an option for you. But a lot of the plans that we have here, the vast majority, 95% of the plans are going to be HMO plans. Now, under Part C, the commercials that you see, they always, you know, tout a dental vision, gym membership, money for this, money for that, transportation, uh, hearing aid coverage. So they generally will offer those additional benefits. Uh, I will say this, though. Um, a lot of the plans say, hey, we'll give you dental. The dental on, on all of the plans is not that great. So just a heads up, because that's the first thing that a lot of people ask. But, you know, they're giving it to you at no cost. So, you know, it's basically going to be a dental discount plan, to be quite frank. Uh, there are there is there is just one plan that I would consider would be at least decent because they'll give you a reimbursement regardless of what you do. But we can talk about that later. Uh, as far as vision, gym memberships, yeah, they'll give you that. Most people do not use their gym membership. Funny, but like 2% uh, of people will ever use it. And then if they take that benefit away, then all hell breaks loose, right? Because everybody wants to wants to know that they at least have the option to go to the gym, right? <laughs> so funny how that works. Uh, and then there are plans for people with certain specific conditions. Like you can see in the bottom left, you can see it says dual eligible plans. So if somebody has Medicare, Medi-Cal, there are specific plans that cater to people with both Medicare, Medi-Cal. And generally, you know, those plans will give you even more additional benefits. So as an example, you know, they might say, hey, we'll give you $500 for glasses. And then we might give you, and you know, 50 bucks a month for you to purchase food. And we might even give you 50 bucks a month for you to purchase or to pay for utilities. There are plans also that cater to chronic uh, people, chronic populations, so people with chronic conditions like diabetes or high blood pressure. And so the goal of those plans has to be to get the person better, uh, cure, not, not necessarily cure them, but get them, get them uh, better from that chronic condition. And so those plans generally offer certain perks for people that have diabetes and, and cardiovascular disorders. Now, to be eligible, for a Part C plan, Medicare Advantage plan, you must have both Parts A and B. So sometimes people will only have Part A or only have Part B. They cannot enroll in a Medicare Advantage plan. You must also live in the plan service area. So every plan is going to be different depending on where you live. So as an example, Riverside County has different plans than Stanislaus County up north than LA County. And sometimes companies will work across other um, counties, but the benefits might be a little bit different depending on the county. And so that's just the way it works. If you go to a different state, that's also going to be a whole different slew of benefits. Now, obviously, determining eligibility and making sure that your benefits, whatever you want to be wanted to be covered, it's always a great idea to get help from somebody and you know discuss that uh, further. Now. The enrollment periods, depending on, on where you're at. So if you're going to turn 65, you're going to have a period of seven month, a seven-month window to enroll. Uh, that's called your initial enrollment period. So if you, if uh, the three months before you can enroll and your plan begins when Medicare, your Medicare start, and then the month of your birthday, and then three months after, and that's the seven-month uh, window for you to enroll initially on either a Part D plan or a Medicare Advantage plan. For a Medicare supplement, uh, normally you also have that window initially uh, because the Medicare supplements are administered by life insurance companies. Generally, you will not have to answer any medical questions 
when you first turn 65. But then if you do not sign up for a supplement and you want to sign up later, if you have any health conditions, they can deny, deny you. There is also what we call annual elective period, which is the period we are in right now, goes from October 15th and ends on December the 7th. And that's a period where you can, if you are under already on a Part C Medicare Advantage plan, or if you're on a Part B plan, you can make changes. You can go from one to the other, or you can switch from plan to plan, and you can make as many um, choices as you want during that time, and whatever you choose at the end will become effective on January 1st of the following year. The next enrollment period, which makes everything confusing, is open enrollment period, and a lot of people call AEP open enrollment, but it's not. Between open enrollment, it goes from January uh, 1st through March 31st, and during that time, let's say you signed up during annual enrollment for a plan and you just don't like it, you can choose a different plan or you can go back to your old plan. Or if you just forgot to make a change, you can also change uh, one time during uh, open enrollment. So on that, if you make a change in January, it takes effect February, so on, so on and so forth, but you only get a one opportunity uh, to switch. You can also go back to original Medicare. So if you're on Medicare Advantage, if you sign up for a Part E plan, it will automatically disenroll you from the Medicare Advantage and it would put you back on original Medicaid. And there's certain special election periods. So for example, let's say that you're working, you did not take Medicare because your work was giving you insurance and uh, you are going to retire and you end up retiring. So you actually do get a special election period where you can one, sign up for Medicare Part B as well as for a plan, as well as for a supplement without having to prove it true. You do have that. You do have that benefit if uh, you have other insurance that is called creditable coverage. Creditable coverage just means that it's as good or better than what Medicare, original Medicare, would offer. And you also could qualify for a special election period. Let's say you move outside of the service area, that would allow you to change to a different Medicare Advantage plan or a Part D plan if you're moving from one county to another. Uh, if you receive assistance from the state, so anybody with Medi-Cal, is able to switch your plan every three months quarterly, or if you have been diagnosed with a certain uh, qualifying condition, for example, let's say a chronic plan is available in your area for diabetics and you have just been diagnosed with diabetes or you already have diabetes, you, can, you have a one-time opportunity in the year to use that uh, as a special election. Now, some of the things that you have to take into consideration when making decisions, obviously, you know, you might have a budget, you might, uh, you might see certain doctors, uh, you might want some doctors, and you want to make sure you keep them, then all of that's going to be important. And obviously, you know, if you're still working, if you have a spouse, and they're on your coverage, you know, we come across that situation often where the spouse is younger. And if the person working retires, they, their spouse might lose coverage. That's something you also want to take into account. It's always uh, it's always better to you know talk about it with somebody that can give you the options, and then at least you know, hey, you know what, I'm better off you know not taking Medicare yet, or hey, you know what, it might actually make more sense to take Medicare. Um, everybody's situation is a little bit different, so it's always good to ask. It doesn't cost anything. Perfect. So we have come to the end of the presentation now. If anybody has any general questions uh, that I can answer, I'll be happy to do so. And if anybody needs my information, it's up on the screen, but Jeff will also forward that to you. And so um, you can also reach out through email. Like I said, just give me, just bear with me uh, this time of the year because this year has been specifically more insane than the last years. Uh, we, like I mentioned in the beginning, there's a, one of the health plans is going out of business, which is Inner Valley Health Plan. And then one of the other health plans, which is IHP a Dual Choice, is losing its contract with, uh, I believe, Desert Oasis. So they're not no longer going to work together. So, you know, we have, we have a lot of folks who we are helping uh, under those plans. So, you know, if you send me an email, just give me a couple of days to respond. And if you call my office, uh, if normally the girls will answer and they will always give me the message and normally I will call you back. It might be after hours when I call you. So uh, like I said, just, just be patient. 
anybody have any questions here in the audience? I'll also check the chat and see if you have questions. No, you did mention. I didn't put you out to sleep, sleep did I? No. <laughs> you did mention chronic plans that um, we have for diabetes. Is HIV included in that or no? Uh, there is not a specific plan for HIV. However, I will say this um, there is a, a new plan. One of the companies, uh, Scan, is, going, is offering for next year. And that plan specifically is working with a Desert AIDS project as well. And they're offering it. It's 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 catering to the um, LGBTQ plus community. So that's a new plan for 2023. It's got pretty pretty good benefits actually. Um, so if anybody you know is interested in that plan for sure, we can talk that's about it. I think that plan. I think there's going to be a, a 12 million at GAP. So we're talking about. It. Yes, I I believe so. I was supposed to be uh, up there talking about it, but. We're just so busy. I, I might be one of my uh, one of my compatriots from Bill Hearts. The other question. They explained everything perfectly. You understand everything. <laughs> <laughs> so, so everybody's a Medicare expert now, and uh, I'm hiring. <laughs> yes, ma'am. He's got uh, five cents. She said. So let's see. So there's a question on the um, in the chat okay. about the scan. That's not Scripps. It's through. Um... Uh, no, Scripps is going to be in San Diego. Um, it's going to be. It's called the Affirm Plan. Scan Affirm. A F F I R M. So that's going to be again presented at Desert Aids Project tomorrow. Uh, but if anybody wants to talk about it, you know, uh, I can always send you like a of benefits and whatnot, and you can look at that as well if you're interested. <laughs> And, or if you have providers at a at Desert Age Project, hey, you know, it might be a good opportunity to, you know, well, a pretty decent. So is that a Medicare Advantage? Like an HMO? Yes, that one is a Medicare Advantage plan. Is it an HMO? Or it, it is an HMO, HMO. yeah. Yes. yes. Now, everything I hear about HMO is not good, especially when you're living with uh, HIV or something like that. Is that generally you're much better off? Well, it depends really on your providers, but um, like, for example, in terms of the medications, if you qualify for any of the programs, uh, those medications are gonna be covered program, not necessarily by your, by your health plan or your Medicare Advantage plan. So it really depends on your specific providers because if your providers are all in network with an HMO, then it really, it's not really going to matter too much i mean i guess it, it does in terms of the referral process if you're with a network that is going to take time to give you a referral then that might play a role in your decision right uh, because normally if you have a normally it's a medicare supplement if you have a supplement you do not need a referral for most things um, there are certain things that you will need a referral for anyways like a cancer doctor but for the most part when you're on when you are on a medicare supplement and if you have uh, one of the organizations paying your premium on your behalf, then normally that is all. That is a very good option because you don't have to worry about. It. There are plenty of people who have HMO plans, and you know they are happy with them. Uh, but again, some of the comments that you might have heard might have been because of the referral process. It does take a week or two for them to refer you, and then if the doctor or the medical group drops the ball and they forget to send the referral. They'll play, the, they'll play the blame game where they'll say, hey, you know, we sent your referral. <laughs> and, then, and maybe they never sent it, right? And vice versa, the medical group might say, hey, they never sent it, right? But they just never processed it. Those are some of the comments that you hear, um, you know, and you, you always uh, hear people will always talk about the bad, but generally will not talk about the good. So whoever's happy may not be out there you know, singing praises, but whoever's angry, you better believe they're going to be, <laughs> they're going to be, you know, pretty pissed off. Maybe make some comment. And in terms of the formulary drugs covered, you know, for those of us with HIV, we're fortunate to live in California where ADAP, um, most of us qualify for ADAP, but we've got a really good formula. So it doesn't matter if your plan covers it or not, ADAP will pick up the uh, difference if they don't. So, uh, 
mention um, that IEHP build choice going under? No, no, not, not dual choice. They're not going to. They are just, uh, they're working with one of the, the networks, which is Desert Oasis. And that contract is not going to, it doesn't look like it's going to continue for next year. Yeah, but they're still going to be around. It's just a contract with them. They're one of the largest networks. So if like, for example, let's say somebody's on dual choice and they have a uh, Desert Oasis doctor, they will not be able to, you know, keep that doctor if they don't change their mind, right? Also, um... I'll be turning 55 in July. Um, there ain't any time to do this. If you are already receiving Social Security, um, you will get your Medicare card automatically four months before, three to four months before. If you are not receiving Social Security, you want to go to Social Security office three months before and apply for Medicare Parts A and B. Okay, if you have A and B already, then you don't have to do anything because you probably have it because of a disability, um, you know, because you're under 65. Um, so, you know, if I don't know what your specific circumstance is, but if you need help uh, figuring out what you want to do for next year, then, you know, we can certainly, you know, talk about it more in a personal setting and, you know, I can direct you and point you in the right. It doesn't happen at 65 or 65. Uh, no, uh, for Medicare, you're eligible at 65. However, some people are eligible before because they might have a disability. So if you've been disabled for 24 months, you will get Medicare automatically, A and B. And if you are have Lou Gehrig's disease um, or um, dialysis, renal, renal failure, you will also get it before, or if you're blind um, as well. I didn't see any online. Well, if not, um, you've got Cesar's information. I put it in the chat and um, you put it up on the screen. So feel free to reach out to him or um, I can relay any messages if you like. So thank you so much, Cesar. We appreciate thank you. You guys are you know, some of the best uh, crowd that I've had the pleasure of presenting to in the past and right now. So I really want to thank uh, Jeff for making this happen. and. You know, we we hope we see you again next year. All right. Have a great rest of your night. Thank you.